Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mega Projects. This one mostly made because I like the movie Top Gun. <laughs> I think we already did the F-16. Uh, if we haven't done it yet, it will be coming soon. This one is the MiG-29, the kind of Russian equivalent, or maybe it's the F-15, one of those. This is the Russian equivalent of an American plane. Let's get into it. But of course, before we do, I want to say that this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Safety and security online are super important, and you can protect yourself online with a MiG-20 <laughs> with Surfshark. You get 85% off and three months for free through the link in the description below, or just go direct to surfshark.deals forward slash mega. The Cold War battle for the skies involved two legendary fighter jets. Though they never actually participated in direct combat involving the Soviet Union and the United States, the debate over which is the better aircraft still rages to this day. The sleek, reliable American F-16 or the rugged, rapid Soviet MiG-29. Now, even though this comparison is made all the time, the two aircraft serve different purposes. The F-16 was always designed as a light, cost-effective, multi-role jet to support the more expensive F-15, while the MiG-29 was a typical air superiority fighter jet, not overly concerned with avionics or range, but rather with dazzling maneuverability. In this video, we'll be focusing on the MiG-29, a true helter-skelter of an aircraft capable of the most astonishing high-speed maneuvers, and one which, in the West at least, came to personify the threat of the Red Enemy. But it was also an aircraft that remained mysterious to most outside the Soviet Union until its collapse in 1991. But was the MiG-29 really everything that it was cracked up to be? Well, let's take a look. The Cold War saw many battles, most of which were never actually fought in physical terms. It was often the battle for prestige and tactical superiority which pushed the USA and the Soviet Union to such extraordinary lengths. Whether it was spaceflight, shipbuilding, nuclear weapons, or aviation, the stance was often simple. Mine has to be bigger and better than yours or at least look like it. The results were some monstrous pieces of military hardware, such as the American aircraft carriers and the Soviet Typhoon-class submarines. By the way, we've covered both of those. We did the Typhoon-class submarine. We did the Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. I think we've got the new generation of aircraft carriers in the works. I'm not sure if we pressed ahead of that. You will find out in the next few weeks, I suppose. But in the 1960s and 1970s, the battle for the skies really began to heat up. During the Vietnam War, the North Vietnamese Air Force was using the MiG-17, an aircraft produced in the Soviet Union from 1952 and which had begun to challenge the low-altitude bombers being used by the US at the time. In the early days of the Korean War, which had ended in 1953, the US had enjoyed relative air superiority, but now things were very different. In response to this challenge, the US developed the F-4 Phantom, a multi-role fighter jet. The Soviets matched it with the MiG-23, but the Americans raised the stakes further with the F-15 Eagle, which entered service in 1972. This was generally how things sort of went at the time, the most elaborate form of poker that the world had ever seen. The F-15 was an excellent aircraft, and the Soviets really knew it. There was only one thing to do, therefore. In 1974, the development of a new aircraft began, designated MiG-29A, with its first flight taking place on the 6th of October 1977, about three years later. This prototype was first spotted by American surveillance the following month, and the unknown aircraft was given the name Ram-L because it had been sighted near the town of Ramenskoye, southeast of Moscow. As with many pieces of hardware on both sides, it was given different names by NATO and the Soviets. Those in the West gave it the nickname Fulcrum A, while to the Soviets it was a MiG-29A. Over the years, several upgrades have been added to the MiG-29, most significantly to increase the weapon load to 4,000 kilograms, though unfortunately we don't know what the original load was, secrecy and all that. They also had a jamming system added inside the upper fuselage and an increase in fuel capacity Capacity, though, as I'll go into shortly, its fuel capacity doesn't exactly equate to a long flight range even now. These upgrades were added as standard to newly built MiG-29s, but they were also upgraded on older models.
In total, it's believed that over 1,600 MiG-29s have been built, and while the higher-grade MiG-A was kept for Soviet use only, the downgraded MiG-29B, 912A, and MiG-29B, 912B were exported to many Warsaw Pact countries and even some non-Pact countries during the 1980s. These aircraft had considerably less capable avionics and were not able to carry nuclear weapons. Overall, the MiG-29 has been exported to 29 countries around the world, ranging from as far west as Peru and as far east as Myanmar. Most of the countries operating the aircraft were once part of the Soviet Union, with Poland and Bulgaria the only countries included in NATO to use the aircraft. And by the way, roughly 793 MiG-29s are thought to be in operation around the world today, making it still one of the most popular fighter jets ever. But this number does lag way behind the estimated 2,242 F-16s being used around the globe. But the current cost of a MiG-29 is about $23.7 million, which is about $12 million cheaper than its American rival. And with that in mind, it's not really surprising that almost all of the countries that have bought MiG-29s 29s have been developing nations. Now, just before we get into the history of the MiG-29 and its uses throughout that history, let me take a moment to tell you about our fantastic sponsor making this video possible now. That's Surfshark. And, well, do you use the internet? I mean, yes, you do. You're on the internet right now. It'd be a bit weird if you didn't use it. Well, let me tell you something. The internet is, can be a pretty weird place. I mean, not on this Mega Projects channel. But there are scarier places out there. There are scarier people out there who want to ruin your day, who want to take your details, steal your identity, which can be a real pain in the ass. Surfshark has something called Hacklock. This searches database for your passwords. Now that might sound bad. My thing is stay away from my passwords. But oh no, Surfshark will let you know if they find your password out there and they'll be like, Simon, go change your password because it looks like that one's been leaked. And you know, like everyone else, I mean, we all have the same passwords for many things. Let's just be honest. But it's not just that, it's not just security. Maybe you're feeling all secure, you want to watch some Netflix, and you're like, oh great, I'm going to watch something, you know, that you've heard is on Netflix, but it's, oh, it's only available in America, oh no. Well, flip on Surfshark, put yourself in Chicago or wherever and you'll be fine. Or if you're in America, you want to watch something on English Netflix, I don't know, Doctor Who or something like that, flip it over. Pretend you're in London. Surfshark is also totally unlimited as a VPN, so if you want to stream in 4K or download stuff, well, no worries. Get 85% off and three months for free through the link in the description below, or just go to surfshark.deals forward slash mega. And let's get back to it. It's probably fair to say that when the MiG-29 appeared on the scene, it worried the Americans. It quickly became clear that the Soviet Union had developed an aircraft that could directly rival the very best the United States could offer, and maybe even beat it. The MiG-29 has mid-mounted swept wings at a 40-degree angle, meaning they point backwards rather than straight across, and include blended leading edge root extensions, which are small additions on the wings that are designed to improve the airflow at high angles. The airframe is primarily constructed with aluminium and distressed for up to 9G maneuvers. Considering that a typical space launch will experience 3Gs, that's really quite impressive. The plane includes a limiter which is designed to limit the plane's g-force, but this can be turned off manually, <laughs> which is particularly cool. It's like, oh yeah, the safety feature. No longer. Let's take it up to 9 Gs. And just in case you're wondering, the F-16 has the same G-force limit. The MiG-29 is 17.32 meters in length with a wingspan of 11.36 meters, making it slightly larger than the F-16. The MiG also has a slightly larger fuel capacity with 3,500 kilograms compared to 3,200 kilograms on the American jet, but the F-16 does have a considerably longer range of 4,216 kilometers compared to the MiG's, frankly, rather the paltry 1,429 kilometers. But remember, as I said at the start of the video, it was never really designed for long-range attacks. That's not what it was for. The MiG-29 also has faster acceleration, which comes from two Klimov RD-33 turbofan engines, each capable of producing 11,240 pound-feet of thrust and 18,277 pound-feet of thrust during afterburn. Afterburn is a special component of an engine which gives it a significant boost in thrust, and it's often used in combat situations or when taking off. Obviously, it uses considerably more fuel, which is why an aircraft 
doesn't have it on all the time. The F-16, on the other hand, only has one engine, a General Electric F-110 GE129 turbofan with 17,155 pound-feet dry thrust and 29,500 pound-feet with its afterburner on. In terms of speed, the MiG-29 has the edge with a maximum speed of Mach 2.25. This compares to the F-16's Mach 2.05, and it's also got a better climb speed of 300 meters a second versus 254 meters a second of the American plane. The Soviet aircraft also has a higher ceiling of 18,000 meters against the F-16 15,000 meters. The MiG also outdoes the F-16 in terms of maneuverability. The truly extraordinary acrobatics this aircraft can perform down to super maneuverability. This is a capability that allows the MiG-29 to execute tactical maneuvers which completely exceed the design limits of purely aerodynamic maneuverability, which the F-16 relies on. This is probably best characterized by something called the Cobra Maneuver, which is a pretty astonishing act that does seem to defy basically every law of aviation. It involves the plane basically traveling at a median speed and then suddenly rearing up its nose in the air to a vertical position which stalls the plane and effectively uses it as a brake. The nose is then lowered again and the plane continues on its way without losing any altitude at all. This is a pretty dazzling sight to behold. There are loads of cool videos on YouTube of this happening. Uh, we're probably showing one here if we can find one that is copyright free. But if we don't, go YouTube search that because it's wild. This is truly a dazzling sight. Probably the biggest differences between super maneuverability and standard aerodynamic maneuverability are the thrust to weight ratio which is much higher with super maneuverability and also the ability to retain at least some control during a stall. All fourth generation and above Russian fighter jets now use super maneuverability along with the American F-22 Raptor. On paper, so far, it sounds like the MiG-29 is significantly better than the F-16 and wouldn't it be easy if it was that simple? But it certainly comes with its drawbacks, so let's talk about those before too many of you smash that dislike button. While they may be fast and great at maneuvering, they do not age well. Its service expectancy of 2,500 hours pales in comparison to the 6,000 hours that the F-16 would typically serve. Most seem to agree that its sensors, avionics, radar, and cockpit setup are also far inferior to the American plane, with pilots in the MiG-29 needing to pay much closer attention to their instruments than those in the F-16. In short, the F-16 is a much more comfortable flying companion than the manic MiG-29. So I guess the choice is fast and great at turning but will quickly fall apart or slightly slower, easier to fly and with a longer life expectancy. The MiG-29 comes with a single GSH 31-30mm cannon in the port wing route. Original versions of the plane came with 150 rounds, though later models have seen that reduced to 100. Three pylons sit under each wing, though some variations have four. These pylons can either carry a 1,150-litre fuel tank, one Vimpel R-27 medium-range air-to-air missile, unguided bombs, or rockets. The outer pylons normally carry R-73 dogfight air-to-air missiles. As I mentioned earlier, the Soviet versions of the MiG-29, which were not exported, could carry a single nuclear bomb on the port inboard station. In 1997, a deal got done that shook the aviation world. America purchased 21 MiG-29s. These were not purchased from Russia, but rather from Moldova, an ex-Soviet country looking to raise some much-needed cash from the military hardware that had been left in the country. Officially, the deal was done to stop the MiG-29s from being sold to Iran, who were then not exactly on friendly terms with the United States. I mean, some things apparently just don't change. But no doubt US officials must have been salivating over the opportunity to get their hands on this aircraft that they had been warily eyeing for so many years. This infuriated Russia, but they were in no position to prevent the deal. The planes have since been carefully examined, much of the technology is now classified by the Americans, and a number sit in aviation museums across the country. <laughs> 
While the MiG-29 has often been used as more of a deterrent and a counterweight to American aircraft, it has seen plenty of use in real combat, much of it outside of the Soviet Union or later Russia. The first international customer was India, which bought 66 MiG-29s in 1980. The aircraft was heavily involved in the 1999 Cargill War between India and Pakistan over the disputed region of Kashmir. The first European nation outside the Soviet Union to use the MiG-29 was Yugoslavia, which purchased 16 in 1987 and 1988. During the breakup of the country in 1991, the MiGs only saw limited combat, but were used in the attack on the Croatian government residence on the 7th of October 1991. During the Kosovo War, which began in February 1998, six MiG-29s were destroyed by NATO forces. The Gulf had seen plenty of combat involving the MiGs. Both Iraq and Iran used them during the war between the two countries that began in 1988, though numbers of aircraft destroyed during that conflict remain non-existent. As Operation Desert Storm got underway in 1991, Iraqi MiG-29s were again in action, this time in direct competition with the very aircraft it had always been built to compete with, the F-16 along with the F-15. Five MiG-29s were shot down by F-15s during the operation, while Russian media made claims on several occasions that coalition aircraft had been downed by MiGs, but this was always denied by the British and American forces. Again, some things just don't change. They've also been heavily used in Syria to attack the Free Syrian Army and potentially involved in attacks on villagers in Sudan, but this hasn't been verified. Finally, Ukraine has seen plenty of incidents involving MiG-29s during Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014. 45 MiGs were captured by Russian forces. Apparently, Russian soldiers dismantled them and then shipped them across the border back to Ukraine, who in turn put them back together to be used in the ongoing conflict in the east of the country against insurgents who looked remarkably Russian-like. Whether Russia was attempting some kind of peaceful diplomatic act with this, we're not entirely sure, but it's certainly one of the stranger stories from the war. And remember, Russia Russia and Ukraine were never technically at war over Crimea, with many of the soldiers taking part doing so without Russian insignias. And with the slightly dubious 95% referendum vote in favor of Russian rule, maybe this contributed to the MiG-29 merry-go-round as a somewhat gracious act. During the 1980s, the US began developing the costly F-22 Raptor, a stealth tactical fighter that would raise the bar once again. While the MiG-29 was proving a great success, Soviet authorities once again demanded a design upgrade. But this was a big step up, and the development costs quickly spiraled upwards. However, the Soviet Union was nothing if not utterly belligerent in its desire to keep up with the United States. By the end of the decade, plans were emerging of an excellent, although very expensive, aircraft. Construction of an early prototype was halfway through when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, and while full-scale mock-ups were completed, the plane itself was not, and plans for the so-called 144 were shelved. Due to high costs, the Russian government officially cancelled the design in 1997, but, and this is where things get a little strange again, the plane appears to have been completed with an alternative source of income. The company behind it, Mikoyan, had financial problems at the time, which led to a restructuring of the company. It's not entirely clear whether this was financed by private money, there were a few oligarchs around at that time, or perhaps even a government back channel. But the following year, the Russian government announced the existence of the aircraft which completed quite a turnaround in just a year. On the 29th of February 2000, it took to the skies for the first, and actually the last time. Though no reason has ever been made public, the fact that this costly long-term project came to such an abrupt end after only one test flight probably points to some significant structural problems. The replacement for the MiG-29 had failed, but one has finally now arrived. That's the MiG-35, and it's got vastly improved avionics and weapon systems, and it was officially unveiled to the world in 2007, but only entered service in 2019. It is truly a remarkable plane, and if you'd like to hear a lot more about it, well, it could definitely be a future Mega Projects video because it's probably outside of the scope of the video today. If you'd like to hear all about that, please let me know in the comments below. Now, of course, we hope this never happens, but wouldn't we all just love one great dogfight between a MiG-29 and an F-16? I mean, it is the great paradox of the whole Cold War that all this great military hardware was built up 
and they're never really used. Don't get me wrong, it's a good thing, but a great showdown between the two legendary aircraft would at least help settle this eternal debate. The MiG-29 is like much of the military hardware that came out of the Soviet Union. Big and powerful, but you probably wouldn't trust your life with it. It's no coincidence that it has primarily been sold to developing countries as a low-budget fighter jet, but that's not to take anything away from it. There is something astonishing about watching the MiG-29 in action, ducking, diving, rolling, and of course performing the absolutely absurd Cobra maneuver. This plane sometimes seems more like a stunt aircraft than a military one. But make no mistake about it, this is a devastating bringer of death. Just an acrobatic, cartwheeling, logic-defying bringer of death. And I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do smash that like button below. If you'd like more planes, stuff like that, suggest it below. I know we've got the A-12 coming up, which is the uh, plane that came before the SR-71 Blackbird, the prototype in a way, so that's coming up. No need to suggest that below. Many people have suggested it, so that's why it gets done. Use the comments, make a suggestion, and thank you for watching.